Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to do part three of an exploration of Joe Morello's Master Studies. We're going to focus on book two today. I've already done most of book one, and we'll get to some of that other parts of book one in some later videos. But I wanted to go over book two because that corresponds really well with the first sections of book one. And I have several ways I do these with students. A lot of times we'll, we'll go back and forth between the books for my more advanced students because this is uh, advanced technical stuff. So before you work on this, you probably want to work on stick control and accents and rebounds for several years. And then look at Joe Morrell's Master Studies number one. And then number two, the first sections you can do uh, concurrently, so at the same time. So today we'll do some of the warm-up exercises and then uh, we'll do some of the sticking exercises from the first section of the book. And this book is laid out a little bit differently than the first book, uh, which had many sections. This book has, uh, you know, four or five sections, but they're very similar. And Joe used to like to do everything with these things he called fill-ins. So you would do a pattern, and then you'd fill it in with doubles or singles, and that was a lot of his concept, which was great because it was very logical from working uh, from simple slower strokes to faster strokes. And I believe that's what he worked on with uh, George Stone as well. So we'll start today with some warm-up exercises that are in Master Studies number two. Now it's important to do these exercises very slow when you start. And you can do each one a number of times or you can do all the way through. So I'll do each one a couple times for you to show you what they should look like, hand position, what parts of the hand and fingers and wrist that you should be using to do these. So let's start out with warm-up exercise number one. Normally I'll do this about quarter note equals 170 if I'm feeling pretty good that day. If you're not feeling good, in other words, as far as your technique, if, if you're feeling a little stiff, then definitely go slower. You don't want to overdo it when you warm up. I use lots of things to warm up. I try to change up my routine. I've actually done a whole video on my own personal warm-up routine. But sometimes I'll do these to warm up just to keep myself interested. And I used to use these quite often. And they're great. So I uh, definitely recommend doing that. And hopefully you all have the book there because I can't put stuff on the screen because that's a copyright infringement. So once again, let's start with exercise one. I'll put the metronome on. Quarter note equals 170. And this exercise is all in eighth notes and it uses accents on variant various parts of the rhythm. One, two, three, four. So you'll see that's exercise number one, and I'm using kind of a whip stroke for that, but it is a wrist stroke. So slowly, now by wrist stroke, I don't mean I'm holding the stick tightly and I'm doing like this. You don't want to do that. There's always a bounce involved in your playing. So when you throw that stick, it's going to want to bounce up. But instead of letting it bounce up all the way, like that, you're stopping it. And you're doing that with a slight clinch of your fingers, like that, very slight. Now with the traditional left hand, it looks like this. So that's some wrist, a lot of thumb, and squeezing the stick like this. Again, not a forceful action. There should be some bounce in there. Okay, so that's number one. Now number two changes up a little. This one's in 6-4, and it's every three notes. One, two, three, four. So a little bit of molar exercise, uh, you know, in there where you're doing. So in this case, we're throwing the stick because we have more time to recover than we had with the single stroke. 
Now going on to number three, we have even more time. It's every four notes we're accenting now. One, two, three, four. So again, you can use that whip stroke. Number four is every five notes. One, two, three, four. All right, and number five is every six notes. Now, uh, the point is to go slow and build these up to a tempo, you know, because you are supposed to warm up. But I also use these for just working out. In other words, getting my hands stronger. So we'll start and I'll play this whole exercise through a couple times, uh, twice each. So two times for each number. One, two, three, four. So next we come to warm up exercise number two. Now this exercise is much more difficult than number one because you have to play a lot of accents in a row uh, with one hand. So the idea is to play it slow enough so that you can play all those accents cleanly. It's really easy to rush these accents, so be really careful. Also, you're going to want to use kind of a bounce stroke for the non-accented notes, so like this. And then for the accents, use a little more wrist. So the first one would be So this is more of a timing exercise than anything to play all those consecutive changing rhythmic values with one hand is tricky especially when they're accented. So I'll do each one twice and I'll do the whole thing all the way through. This is quarter note equals 107. 1 2 3 Four. So towards the end there, it gets a little, little bit exhausting to do this. All right, so that's a really good one for timing. Then we turn the page, uh, to page eight, and we have warm-up exercise number three. Again, even more challenging because you have more notes accented uh, than before. So we'll start this out. Uh, let's do this one a little slower. Let's, let's try this at 104, and this one can, can go a little slower. 
Uh, and just remember the same things that we applied to number two with the finger strokes, the bouncing, and the wrist strokes apply to this one. One, two, three, four. Again, another endurance exercise. I'd recommend doing these slower than I'm doing them at first, for sure. Uh, and if you're going to warm up, you don't want to play that fast. So start as slow as 60 if you need to do that, okay? When you do play that slow, be careful that your triplets don't rush when you're playing um, the accents. The tendency when you play heavier with accents is to rush. And that's why this exercise is so good, because it keeps you from doing that. The next section of the book are eighth note and triplet combinations. I really like this um, part of the book. There's two ways to do this. You can do this in kind of a classical manner where everything's straight. So, or you could swing everything. That's exercise number one. I definitely suggest doing it both ways. All right. If you play it swung, make sure you have the triplet on. So if you put that triplet subdivision on, it sounds like this. Now you're going to want to do this much faster than that eventually. So normally I'll almost double that tempo to let's say 190. So that's the triplet feel at quarter note equals 190 with a triplet subdivision. And you can do it faster for sure. Do it a lot of tempos. That's the key with these. Do them as many with as many tempos as possible so you're not rushing or dragging. You don't want to have one favorite tempo. The object is not just speed. It's about control. You want to be able to control things so they don't rush. Also dynamic control. So play them softer, which is really tricky. So. So very delicate. Now the other way to do this is as written, so then you'd put the subdivision back on quarter notes and you'd play them straight. Just like that, all right? And you can do them faster. I mean, I've done these as fast as 240. I'll show you. Now, if you're ever going to use them that fast, that's the question. Here's 240. 
One, two, three, four. And also, uh, as usual, there's lots of ways to do them. You can do them with more wrist, like I was doing there. Or you can use more fingers. So that's more of a bounce stroke. And that sounds completely different. So where we might think of the wrist stroke being staccato, the bounce stroke is legato. Let me give you an example of that. I'll put the metronome back on. And I'll play... Uh, the exercise is each one twice, staccato first, and then legato. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> one, two, three, four. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, again, first way was staccato, second way legato, more bouncing. So taking my fingers off the stick a little more so the stick has room to move. Whereas when you're playing staccato using mostly wrists, you're not clamping down on the stick, but it's a firmer grip. And by the way, that works really well when you're playing pianissimo. You want to use more wrist. Okay. So I love this section of the book. It's really great. Now what he does in the next part of it, he'll go to the fill-ins. So in other words, those triplets now would become sextuplets. So six notes instead of three. So. You can do them the same way, staccato or legato. Now, a good tempo for this is much, much slower, obviously, because you got those. You could start out at 100, so like this. Just always remember, speed is not the goal here. The goal is control. Speed will come if you use the right technique and you have the right control. Never try to play something faster than you're capable of doing it in time and relaxed. If you start practicing fast all the time, you're just going to get tight and develop bad habits. And that's going to carry over into all your playing. The trick to playing really fast is staying relaxed and letting the stick do most of the work. Okay? That's really the most important thing that we can teach you here. That's what good technique is. It's relaxation. And that was Joe's whole concept. And that's what Stone taught him, as well as Billy Gladstone, who we also studied with, was the whole relaxed technique. Never a tight technique. And you can see that in his playing. If you watch him play with Brubeck or obviously any videos online that you can find, you'll see him play. He's extremely relaxed. So let's try this a little faster now. I would say maybe 140 would be, you know, the fastest you want to do it uh, safely. That's pretty quick. So... Alright, so that's page 10. And, you know, we can go on. We don't have hours and hours to do this video here. But you get the idea. And I work on these all the time. And, of course, you can do them faster than that, but it has to be clean and it has to be relaxed. I keep saying that. Same thing over and over again. Alright, and the next section of this on page 14 is really great. This is similar to book one, where he has the, the buzzes, the rolls, so... Now, the whole idea here is not a perfect orchestra roll like this. 
which I don't think that's perfect, but <laughs> on a pad, uh, it's going to be good for you to practice these on a real drum head, okay, not a piece of rubber. And then obviously practice on a real snare drum. I'm not doing that today because then you wouldn't be able to hear me talk necessarily, and then I have to adjust all the volumes. So a pad works fine for these, but something with a real head. And the trick to these is to buzz each stroke. So let's try it slow first so I can show you what I mean. Again, if we go to, let's say 120, so that's here. The underlying rhythm is this. So we're at the bottom of page 14, number one. And then we're substituting these buzzes for those single strokes on the triplets. So. Now again, that might be a little awkward because you really want to put more strokes in there. At 120, you might want to do this. But that's not the point. The point is to get a longer, smoother buzz, slowly. And let that stick buzz. Don't go, but this. So you want, you want your hands to buzz the stroke and you push with your fingers just slightly. So we're applying pressure and then releasing. Okay, and my uh, video on rolls that I did a few months ago, you might want to look at that. Whenever I post this, it might be years from now, but you might want to look at that. It's, it's, all, it's a rolls, all kinds of short rolls, long rolls. I did several videos on those. And then I talk all about the buzz and, and crushing that note. Okay, so let's try some of these uh, for you. We'll go... Again, 140 is a good tempo for these. One, two, three, four. Now, before I go on, you can alternate. In other words, you can start with the left hand there, like I did on the second one. Okay, but then you come up short with a five, but you can alternate these. He did not include that in the book, but sometimes I'll do a, um, instead of a triplet, I'll do a five, which will put me on my other hand. So it looks like this. Okay, so that's an old thing. It's old school thing, how you practice rolls. You use note groupings. So with all of these substitutions, you can use fives. You can use groups of seven. It doesn't have to be triplets. But uh, the way he has it written is this. Here's number two. One, two, three, four. All right, so we stop there at nine. Uh, actually, let me just play 10 for you. One, two, three, four. So, so you have them all. So that'll conclude this video, and that's the first 16 pages of the book. I definitely recommend reading the introduction, which is the first page. Uh, and the next video we'll do will be Paradiddle Combinations, which is my favorite of all of his uh, studies, pretty much, is this. I love this kind of study. And this comes straight out of George Stone, uh, stick control kind of thing. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.